The Donald Trump saga continues, and at this point, even if you're not a fan of the man, you have to admit that his storyline is like something out of a movie. It, it's wild to see the events that have happened throughout the last eight or so years. Uh, so let's start from the top. At the very beginning of the Trump presidential story, we start with Barack Obama telling Donald Trump at a dinner in front of a whole bunch of people that he will never be president of the United States. What a way to start this story off. Say what you will about uh, Mr. Trump. He certainly would bring some change to the White House. <laughs> all kidding aside, obviously we all know about your credentials and breadth of experience. Um, for example, uh, no, seriously, just recently in an episode of Celebrity Apprentice <laughs> at the Steakhouse, the men's cooking team uh, did not impress the judges from Omaha Steaks. And there was a lot of blame to go around, but you, Mr. Trump, recognized that the real problem was a lack of leadership. And so ultimately, you didn't blame Little John or Meatloaf. <laughs> you fired Gary Busey. And these are the kind of decisions that would keep me up at night. I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president. And the reason is because I have a lot of faith in the American people. Fast forward a little bit and Donald Trump announces that he's going to run for president as a Republican. And all of the Republicans are saying, no way, there's no way he's ever going to pull this off. You know, Jeb Bush, he's our guy. Ted Cruz, he's our guy. Then Donald Trump goes up there and just absolutely massacres all of the Republicans on stage and secures the nomination in a you know, landslide victory in the most entertaining way possible. What a time to watch politics. It was absolutely hilarious. But I am worried. I'm very concerned about him having him in charge of the nuclear weapons because I think his response, his, his visceral response to attack people on their appearance, short, tall, fat, ugly. My goodness, that happened in junior high. Are we not way above that? And would we not all be worried to have someone like that in charge of the nuclear arsenal? Jake, Jake, Mr. Trump, I never attacked him on his look. And believe me, there's plenty of subject matter right there. That I can tell you. But Jake, Jake, I want to, I want to give Jake, Mr. Trump. Last month, you said you were opening, open to naming Senator Cruz as your running mate. I did. So why would you be willing to put somebody who's a maniac you, one heartbeat away from the president? But I've gotten to know him over the too. last three or four days. He has a wonderful temperament. <laughs> <laughs> He's just fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> Senator Cruz. Senator Cruz. You have not been willing to attack Mr. Trump in public, but you did you question his attack. judgment. The Republican nomination is where the Donald Trump train really started to gain steam because he won a lot of people over with his, you know, just flat out saying the thing that everyone is thinking. We are currently in the post-Trump era of politics. Don, every, a lot of people seem to forget that prior to Donald Trump, everything was walking on eggshells, politically correct. Every politician had to be like this angel that had been running for president since they were nine years old. And uh, like a scandal from when you were in your early 20s would destroy your career. And then Donald Trump came in and, and sort of just blew the doors off of it and now just says the thing out loud and, and doubles down on the thing, even if people don't like it. He ushered that in and a lot of people really enjoy that. And I think he, you know, at this point, even if he didn't win the presidency, he had changed politics forever. One of the things people love about you is you speak your mind and you don't use a politician's filter. However, that is not without its downsides, in particular when it comes to women. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account- Only Rosie several... O'Donnell. No, it wasn't. Your Twitter account- Thank you. So Donald Trump ends up winning the Republican nomination, and this is where the media attacks start. Now, the media attacks back then were pretty minor compared to what we see today. Nobody was calling him a threat to democracy back then. Most of the media attacks were kind of personal, like the Stormy Daniels stuff, 
or you know he just he doesn't sound and look presidential was the main critique of Donald Trump or they would just be covering some slam dunk comeback that he had on somebody else uh, where you know just Trump doing Trump things was the main topic it wasn't threat to democracy or all of the crazy stuff we have nowadays back then it was pretty tame relative to how it is now there was even a time when he didn't get an Emmy for his TV program three years in a row, and he started tweeting that the Emmys were rigged against Should have gotten it. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. That brings us to the 2016 election where Donald Trump pulled off the biggest upset in United States political history and beat Hillary Clinton, who had the mainstream support of all the media, all the elites. Her last name is Clinton. She was supposed to win. All of the magazines were already pre-printed because she was supposed to win. And that night was wild. The media was having a full-blown meltdown while all of these states went to Trump that he was not supposed to win. And th it changed the game. The media completely lost their marbles. Back on the Young Turks election coverage, I have two things to report. One, it's panic time. Two, I'm on my third cup of coffee. Now shit gets real. It was oh, at yes. it was at 80% an hour ago for Clinton. What is it now? 68%. Okay, uh, god damn it, I'm nervous. After Donald Trump won the election, the media lost their minds. It was a four-year media blitz of orange man bad. No matter what was happening, Orange Man was bad. And we went through all of these different scandal arcs. Uh, the Stormy Daniels thing. Uh, most notably, the Donald Trump is a Russian agent and is working for Putin arc, which went on for years and we still have no explanation for. It just sort of went away. They were just like, ah, you know, I guess he didn't do that. Um, and that brings us to one of the strangest periods in the history of the world that we're going to be looking back at in 20 or 30 years going... Damn, do you guys remember how crazy that period was? And that is COVID. COVID was one of the most bizarre events in world history. Everybody was walking around like banditos, losing their minds, locked in their houses, and f watching the news. That's all anyone did for like a year and a half. And this led to one of the strangest elections in our country's history, where the primary challenger to our president didn't really campaign. There was no... Uh, there wasn't any events. He just sort of like sat at his house and the media did all of his campaigning for him. And the audience at the time that the American public was kind of a captive audience. Everybody was just locked in their house having to watch this shit. And we had unprecedentedly high levels of voter turnout. The 2020 election had the most voters of any election by far. Like it is a huge outlier. I would not be surprised if the 2024 election has less people vote in it than the 2020 election. And not only were, was the turnout unexpectedly high, it was also the most mail-in ballots we, we've ever gotten in combination with a lot of states changing their election laws. So this led to a lot of people going, it seems a little fishy. I would just like to know what you can say to reassure us that this election will not be rigged or stolen. Well. Well, I tell you what, it, it helps in Ohio that we got uh, Democrats in charge of the machines. Um, but, but look, I come from Chicago, so, so I want to be honest. It's not as if it's just Republicans who have monkeyed around with elections in the past. Sometimes Democrats have to. You know, whenever people are in power, they're, you know, they have this tendency to try to, you know, tilt things in their direction. Now, not everybody is on like full blown, like, oh, they stuffed ballot boxes with fake, you know, votes or the machines are rigged. Not everybody is that far into the, you know, conspiracy, but a lot of people go, wow, they sort of had their finger on the scale a lot here. You know, the 24 seven media blitz, the laws changing around mail-in voting, unprecedented mail-in voting. Uh, you know, ballot harvesting campaigns, the likes we've never seen before. And then the fact that we didn't know the results for so long. So from the outside looking in, a lot of it seemed at the very least kind of suspect.
maybe nothing wrong happened, but you can kind of see how the, the seeds of doubt were sown revolving the 2020 election. And I doubt we're ever going to see another election like it in terms of the percentage of voter turnout, the percentage of mail-in votes versus votes casted at a, you know, a normal polling station. Um, it was just a very weird part of world history. It wasn't just the United States. It was, the whole world was upside down during that COVID era. So Donald Trump ends up losing the 2020 election, but the media attacks still keep coming. And I think this is where the establishment, I guess, made their biggest mistake in that they just kept hammering him and the American public has become immune to Donald Trump being bad. Orange man bad doesn't work anymore. Trump is Hitler doesn't work anymore because we are now in this post-era, uh, post-COVID era high inflationary environment where a lot of people are genuinely struggling and a lot of people are going, was my life better under Donald Trump or under Joe Biden? And regardless of what the answer is, the fact that they're asking that question is problematic for Joe Biden. So now we enter the lawfare era where we are now trying to lock up Donald Trump because he's still a threat. He lost, but oh my God, he might run again and oh my God, he might win. And I don't think anybody that is intellectually honest with themselves can say that these lawsuits are not politically motivated because quite obviously they are because the district attorneys that are prosecuting Donald Trump ran their campaigns on we're going to get Trump. That sounds pretty political to me. And it kind of reminds me of the phrase, uh, I can't remember who said it, but for my friends, everything. And for my enemies, the law. Show me the man and I'll show you the crime. Too often there are two standards of justice. One for the rich and powerful and connected, and another for everyone else. It's not just the cases of the famous and privileged with their high-powered legal teams who managed to escape prosecution. I don't know anyone that thinks that Donald Trump is some sort of saint, angelic figure that hasn't done anything wrong in his life. I think most people can kind of agree that he's a bit of an egomaniac, probably is an asshole in a lot of ways. But I think that most people can look at the prosecution of Donald Trump and and you can't help but think it's political because of the timing of all of it. This guy lived his entire life without having any of these issues and now all of a sudden it looks like he's going to be president and now you just got to prosecute him on everything. I think everybody can kind of see what that is and you have the state of New York going after him. You have all of these blue districts going after him where uh, even a, a Republican ham sandwich would get, you know, prosecuted in these areas because they're so overwhelmingly blue. And, uh, you know, they just don't like the guy. So they're going to find him guilty. It's very easy to find a jury that's going to, you know, find him guilty. If you bring him up on enough stuff, you know, some of it will stick. And I think that a lot of people can kind of see that and go, that just seems like corruption and just like bullshit. At this point, he has multiple lawsuits in multiple states at the federal level, at the civil level. And now the state of New York is trying to destroy his business, levy levying all sorts of fines talking about like real estate fraud. So he's trying. they're trying to destroy him from every single possible angle. And this brings us to our current era where Donald Trump has a slight lead on Joe Biden. And then the debates happen and Joe Biden completely falls apart. Now the slight lead that Donald Trump had is now a huge lead and the seeds of doubt are sown when it comes to Joe Biden. The American public has a dramatically different opinion of Joe Biden now and Trump is really really starting to gain momentum despite everything all of the establishment you know has tried to do it's looking like he's gonna win and he's gonna win pretty big so let's go back to the timeline very very quickly so they tried to destroy him through non-stop media coverage they called him a traitor to the country and a russian agent they tried to destroy his business and bankrupt him with all sorts of crazy fines and like bail numbers that are just ludicrous um they tried to imprison him with obvious political, politically motivated district attorneys. Like literally they went and said when they were, you know, campaigning to be district attorney, we're going to get Trump. And then brings us to our, as of yesterday, they tried to kill him. They tried to put a fucking bullet in his brain. Now, maybe they didn't try to kill him, but from the outside looking in, you, from your average low, you know, information voter, Sure, was it just some crazy person that was likely motivated by all of the nonstop fucking media coverage? You know, Trump is Hitler, you know, whatever. Sure, that's probably what it was. But um, 
this the average voter is going to be like, wow, all of that. It's been eight years of nonstop, you know, trying to get this guy, and then you tried to kill him. If you can't see where the Donald Trump story arc is going, then you're coping. This is a traditional hero's journey storyline where the hero starts off, builds some momentum, gets knocked down, and then gets back up and succeeds. That's how it goes. This is the Rocky, you know, you got to get back up moment where, uh, you know, the hero has to come back and it's the redemption arc. This is where we're at. And people are going to vote accordingly because Americans love this shit. Americans love a good story and they love a good comeback story. I just don't see how it won't happen. I think it's almost certain he's going to win the election. Even before the assassination attempt, I think he was going to win the election. But at this point, I, I think it's a lock that he wins the popular vote. And uh, I think we're going to see some, some states that he wins that he should not have won. Um, and I, I kind of hope it goes that way. I think that would be entertaining. I know it sounds crazy, but I think people are going to vote accordingly. Your average person isn't one of these hooked-in leftists that's like, well, just because he got shot doesn't mean he should be president. No, I think your average voter is just going to be like, wow, all of that. It's been eight years of them trying to get him, and then they tried to kill him, and they couldn't. I kind of want to vote for that guy. I think that's the average thought process somebody's going to go through. And it doesn't do you any favors that Joe Biden is the other guy. The contrast between Joe Biden not being able to talk, not being able to walk downstairs, randomly falling over, randomly falling up the stairs, uh, just being embarrassing, and then Donald Trump being shot, and then standing up, raising his fist in the air with blood on his face. I mean, the contrast is, is massive. And the optics of Joe Biden just look horrific. Like They just look horrific when you have one guy that is so obviously physically falling apart, and then the other guy has some of the most iconic pictures uh, in American history probably now. Like, these pictures of Donald Trump go hard. These are going to be staples of Americana. I know it sounds like I'm really sucking the dude's dick, but even people, even like leftists, like huge lefties on Reddit were like, dude, these pictures are good. Like, these look fake. They're so good. They, all, they look like fucking propaganda pictures. They were so perfect. But the dude just lucked out. And you got to hand it to Donald Trump. The dude got shot, but he, he I mean, he knew it was a good photo op. And he took it. And he took some of the most iconic pictures in America, in, honestly, in American history. He's got a few of them now. That mugshot, he knew what he was doing with that mugshot. And then, I mean, to have your ear f fucking blown off and, and to be cognizant enough to, uh, to know, like, this is where you raise your fist up in the air and, and, get the, and get the shot. And poor Joe Biden, he's not cognizant of anything, I don't think. If you go on Reddit or Twitter, there are a lot of people coping, thinking that this is not a big deal. Like, nobody's going to vote for Trump just because he got shot. You know, this is going to be in the news for a week, and then everybody's going to forget. Dude, no. This is a visceral event. This is an event that people will remember. And then you have these incredibly iconic pictures associated with it. Uh, the average voter can very much identify with a political, you know, candidate being assassinated. You know, it's like a big part of history. You know, the Kennedy assassination. This is going to win him voters. Just flat out, it's going to win him voters. Why? Because there's precedent for it. This hasn't happened in 40 years. The last person to be shot was Ronald Reagan 40 years ago. And you know what happened afterwards? He won his election in a historic landslide victory. He won 49 out of 50 states. And that assassination attempt absolutely bolstered his numbers. So in conclusion, it's over. I think the election was over before the assassination attempt, but now Donald Trump is a martyr and people just don't like seeing like politicians get shot. The Kennedy assassination was such a, a point that's been drilled so far into American history that regardless of a, a political affiliation, almost everybody looks at Kennedy as like a, you know, kind of a savior, a saint. You know, he's like a, a legendary figure, regardless of your political beliefs. Everybody kind of looks at Kennedy and goes, that was a good one because he got shot. And Donald Trump has also been shot. Now, 
not everybody's going to think Donald Trump is their guy, but there are going to be a, a good percentage of people that go, you know, they've been going after this guy and they shot him and he's still there. He's still kicking. And I want to vote for that guy. The other guy's falling apart. That's how people are going to take this. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. The Donald Trump story at this point is, is fucking legendary. Like they've been trying to get him. They've been trying to keep him down and they just can't. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe with notifications on. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and join the Discord. It's free.